I were just getting started. I'm uh, just getting everything set up at this point right now. Um, and we will actually get started in a little bit. So we'll start at seven o'clock. I will, in the meantime, put on a timer um, for you to see. Oops, I guess you can't really see that. <laughs> uh, but uh, stay put and, uh, and hopefully we will uh, get everything going fairly soon. Uh, grab a glass of wine, have a drink, do what you need to. I am gonna go give my dog a bone so that hopefully she stays out of the way, but uh, it is what it is, you know, people and things kind of move around as necessary um, because this is gonna be a discussion. We're gonna talk about um, being elitist uh, based on my last blog post, which was really about outsourcing your life. So we'll talk a lot about that. I look forward to seeing questions and comments as we roll through. Uh, thank you so much, Superman, for joining. I'm actually just gonna take a quick uh, 30 second break, well, three minute break, and I will be back in a second. Thank you. Welcome fans, thank you so much. Uh, we're not quite getting started yet, we're just getting ready, uh, preparing for a wonderful session. So today we're gonna be uh, talking about my latest blog post, Becoming Elitist. I'm gonna set the timer on for 30 minutes uh, because that's what I promised all of you that uh, I would be here for the next 30 minutes to ask, uh, answer any questions you may have. So I have my dog in the background. She's uh, chewing a frozen bone to kind of hopefully keep her occupied for a little while. Uh, I have also decided to take this as a more casual approach. If you are a regular fan, I do a monthly vlog uh, every second Monday of every month. It's a two to three minute vlog that I like to do. I'm usually dressed a little bit more formally. The format is much more formal than this one. I decided to wear a t-shirt today as opposed to my typical business dress uh, because it's evening and I want to be here for you, uh, to actually work with you, to talk with you about all the things that we could possibly talk about. Today we're focused on hashtag become elitist. My last blog post was why you should become an elitist, which was based upon a variety of different examples of how people are currently outsourcing their life. 
everything from hiring maids to you know, outsourcing perhaps having your lawn care done, your snow shovel done if you live in Canada or some of the other winter countries. I hope we can see some people bringing in their broadcasts. I would love it if, uh, as you join, let me know where you're from, you know, let me see, you know, who we have available. Uh, this is actually a very exciting time for me. It's my first uh, Periscope show. I'm hoping to do this as a weekly event. Uh, so I guess we could just get started. If, as you have questions, as you want to make comments, if you haven't had a chance to check out my website, please do. It's kimorleski.com. I'll tell you a little bit about myself and my story and we can kind of get started. So in 2014, so a little bit more, less than two years ago, I basically hit a tipping point in my life. I was on a fast track trajectory to be one of the top salespeople of the country. I had actually won several different sales awards. Um, I came number two one year. I think I smashed it out of the park at 175% of plan. Uh, very young, and you know, as I started to accumulate things, I'm accumulating, you know, cars, and I had a condo, and I bought a house, and you know, also not a landlord, and I hadn't even hit the age of 30. And uh, I was working my butt off, right, and ex enjoying these uh, all-inclusive vacations and expensive items, purses, shoes, everything you could imagine. And I really just didn't find myself very happy. And I was in a relationship at the time, and he was also a very self-driven, motivated person. And it was, I remember this very specifically, it was uh, a day in November, and uh, we're sitting there, we're cracking open a bottle of champagne, and he's pouring it, and we're laughing, and we're joking, and, you know, he had just hit a very significant income number, and we're celebrating this moment. And I felt myself dying inside. I felt like, what was this all for? You know, here we are, you know, celebrating a dollar number and he was working out of town six days a week in order to achieve that and we were talking about buying a bigger house and for what it was six days of the week it was me and my dog and he would come home on Saturday afternoons and leave you know Monday mornings before I was even up and I just realized that there was more to life and I had these conversations with him and unfortunately it never really worked out the way I would have loved it to. And so I realized that I needed to do something for myself. I went ahead and sold the house, um, liquidated everything that I didn't want to store, and I stored everything else. And I went from closets of clothes and shoes and purses to living out of a 50 liter backpack, uh, which you can imagine is not a very big thing. If you, if you think of your school backpack, maybe two or three times size of that, and I did that for six months. I bought a one-way ticket to Sydney, Australia, and uh, traveled to there, and you know, continued on, and hit every country and every site that I thought, if life is too short, what would I really want to see in my life? I made a list of everything, and I went there um, from Australia, right up uh, directly from there, as I kind of traveled up through the East Coast. I flew directly to Japan and then came back down through Southeast Asia, hitting China, Vietnam, Cambodia, Indonesia, uh, Thailand, Kuala Lumpur, um, Singapore, India, and as I kind of made my way through the Middle East and Dubai, uh, Turkey, Greece, kind of made my way back down into the northern part of Africa um, to Egypt and Jordan and then continued down to Kenya and Tanzania uh, you know and I, I did everything I, I wanted to I wanted to experience I didn't want materialistic items and as I lived in the world and met all these people I realized materialism was just this portion but it was really the life and the experience and I would in Vietnam, I was staying at a homestay with you know four generations of family, and they're cooking dinner. They basically go out to the field and they harvest everything they want to cook for dinner that night, and that was the course of their life. And they invite tourists to come in, and very little English is spoken, and it's just a lot of smiling and laughing and drinking this ridiculously painful rice wine. <laughs> but it was so much fun, and uh, it was everything as well to. Uh, you know, 
shooting guns in Cambodia, uh, climbing Kilimanjaro, which was by far one of the coolest experiences I've ever done. I highly recommend it. Uh, it's there's just something more spiritual about it than there is actually physically challenging. So that's kind of where my story started. Um, I blogged every day. I turned that and I came back home and uh, was finding myself a little bit lost and decided to turn that entire blog into a book, uh, which you can now buy on Amazon uh, if you'd like to. This isn't a plug, but it is just, you know, what it is. Um, it is called Finding My Self Love. It's by myself, uh, Kim Orleski, and um, yeah, if you do enjoy it, I hope you do. If not, you know, you can continue to read all of my different vlogs and see my pictures and everything that I like to post. So through that process, I found myself wanting to blog more. I, I realized that that was something that I really liked. It wasn't so much the writing process, um, which I do like to write, it was the storytelling. I loved to tell my story, I loved to relate it to people the way they wanted to hear it and you know I looked inside and I said you know what else can I possibly do throughout this entire process I've now become a public speaker I am um, have perhaps two speaking events coming up uh, hopefully Australia you would love to have me because I would love to be there I actually will be there uh, I'm just trying to work out with a few people in order to create some events but if you happen to be listening and happen to be an event planner uh, please direct contact me uh, because we should definitely get in contact and look at something for Sydney uh, that being said so I continue to blog and one day a contest came up. A regular fan had actually submitted me, sent me a little message saying, I submitted you, I thought that was so sweet. And I was just honored, honored to have my blog be looked at by Success Magazine. And when the shortlist came out, out of 600 blogs, I believe it was, I was listed as the top 60. And I, my heart was overwhelmed because it was these amazing names like Robin Sharma, Gabby Bernstein, uh, Jack Canfield, and my mind was just blown. I felt like the woman at the Academy Awards, and you know, thank you so much for just having me here. <laughs> I was so overwhelmed with joy. And I did try a little bit. It was based on contests and voting and everything, and the idea was that if you became a winner, and you would actually be featured in Success Magazine, which, I mean, that's a pretty cool thing to have happen. And so I continued to, you know, let my social media group know that this was something that I wanted to do. And I never really veered off my original values. And one of the biggest things I love to talk about in my public speaking events is about work-life balance, uh, how we need to enjoy the moment, we need to be a little bit more mindful. Uh, but as well as we're allowed to change our mind, we're allowed to explore different options, we're allowed to, to find you know, things that are actually gonna bring us happiness into our lives. And, and this was kind of segue into our conversation today. Um, and so through this process, um, you know, I said, you know, I'm just gonna continue my values. I will you know, submit myself, you know, put everything I have into it up to a certain point. And, the shortlist came out and I was listed on there and I was elated. So through this process, um, hopefully this is where some of you have found me. If not, look forward to it because the list is um, coming out slowly, but I will be featured in the January 2016 issue uh, among many amazing, amazing people. It is just such an honor. And uh, I did read piece for them already and I have a couple more in the queue waiting to be submitted, um, as well as I have writing credentials with the Good Man Project. And uh, if I can get my butt in here, <laughs> I would like to submit a few more. So, which brings us to today's session. Um, my latest blog post was called, Why You Should Become an Elitist. And hopefully those of you that have read it um, have you know some questions or some comments that you'd like to add on, and I would love to see all of those. Um, if you've read it, um, please give a couple of taps, likes, let me see how many of you are out there. And this is a casual environment, so I will be drinking a glass of wine from time to time. I hope you don't mind. Okay, so there aren't um, anybody who has read it yet, uh, which is also a very exciting opportunity. Because hopefully, based on our conversation today, it's something that you find interest in. You go and check out my website, hopefully subscribe. I do do a weekly newsletter. 
uh, which is just my updated blogs and it gives you insider information to any of my upcoming seminars, events. Uh, I'm going to be doing some e-courses, uh, perhaps some webinars in the near future. And I'd like to make this Periscope TV thing a weekly venture so that you and I can have uh, more of a relationship outside of just writing and seeing my talking. I would love to actually be interacting with uh, all of you, the community out there. So becoming elitist is something that I wanted to write about. It is focused around the idea that we need to outsource certain parts of our lives. And whether you can pay for that or whether you can't, there's lots of different options. The whole idea is around the work-life balance to actually get to a point where we start helping ourselves find the things that bring us pleasure. So within that article, I actually use the example of I have a maid. And I have this maid that uh, she comes in bi-weekly and cleans my house, and I'm not a messy person by any means. I just really dislike, you know, wiping down everything in my kitchen. And uh, I live in Calgary, Canada, which is the 45 minutes east of the mountains, we get these, we call these Chinooks, um, the way the wind kind of comes in and it comes in very quickly and it will heat up the temperature but it's also a very prairie region and things get very dusty very quickly. It never fails so it gets, it, the temperature will increase um, from snowy to sunny in a very short period of time. I only know Celsius so it could easily go from minus 10 to plus 15 in a single day, a, a 25 degree temperature difference. And I think maybe in Fahrenheit that might be like 40 degrees, a 40 degree temperature difference in a single day, which is you know, a little bit mind boggling. But this is what happens here. And, uh, and because the winds come through, it becomes very dusty. And I just hate cleaning. I just, I, you know, I don't mind it um, from time to time, but I really hate doing it. And when I really started to look at, you know, what I was actually doing, how much time it was actually taking me, it was taking me probably about three to four hours every single weekend to actually clean. And I realized there were so many better things I could be doing with my time. There was things that I would actually enjoy doing because by the time I wake up in the morning and have my coffee, turn on some music, vacuum, you know, clean every toilet and bathtub, I was exhausted and I was ready for a nap. The fact that I would outsource that now brought me a lot more happiness. Um, it wasn't so much the money, the money was a hard thing to actually decide to part with, but it was a very exciting thing because I was able to then go ahead and find what I actually do enjoy doing with that time. And at that time, I could go ahead and I can continue to write new blog posts. Or I could take my dog for a walk. Or perhaps it's just as simple as, you know, just taking some time to read. I have a TV, but I actually don't have cable. I, um, when I do watch, I watch a little bit of Netflix. But that's about it. Um, so I like to really, you know, fill in my, my soul with different types of activities. And cleaning just wasn't it for me. Um, I was having a conversation with a colleague uh, who I'll be doing a seminar with in the new year. And she was uh, commenting on my article. And she goes, you know, a little bit whispers. She says, you know, we hire somebody to actually mow our lawn and, you know, shovel our sidewalk. And those types of things I don't think we need to hide. We don't need to be shamed of them. We don't need to, we don't need to say it with a sense of entitlement. We have to say it with a sense of pride. You know, I do this because it gives me more free time. I do this because I can make myself happier with the time that I do have for that. So some of the things we can possibly talk about is, okay, well, Kim, that's great. You have the money. You can go ahead and hire these services. What about those that actually don't have the money? And I, I did think about this as well. Um, shared services, all right, which is, you know, such a great thing to do. So, you know, one of the things that I also do, um, I take my dog to daycare, but occasionally, you know, I will actually call up a neighbor, text him and say, uh, listen, I am just unable to do it today or I'm just way too swamped. And he's happy to actually take my dog for me. And I do the same for him as well. And so it really becomes a nice synergy. Um, and 
if this was something that really bothered me, you know, in order to take my dog for a walk, uh, we could probably even come to an agreement, right? Where perhaps I did something for him that he really disliked, you know, maybe I, you know, don't mind, you know, doing things like vacuuming, right? And I would say, listen, I'll vacuum your place, you take my dog for a walk, and we call it even. Uh, you know, in order to actually create not only a sense of community, create a sense of happiness, create relationships, um, too often we rely on social media, and I'm not saying this is a bad thing, this is actually a great opportunity for us to, to actually talk and get together, but it does, uh, it does limit us in some ways because we still need to actually connect with the people that we are close to, the people that we want to connect with, uh, the people that we see and we don't actually go ahead and extend that outreach. So imagine if you were actually able to tell somebody, listen, I will do that for you if you could do this for me. You know, people are out there and they all want to help, right? It's just, it's so much pride for some of us to actually ask for that hand and extension in the process. So I'm hoping uh, there's a few people out there. Uh, if you do have any questions, um, please, I would love to to see them as they come along. This is, uh, we're still talking about becoming elitist. Um, I'm Kim Orleski. My website is kimorleski.com. Uh, I do a weekly vlog, uh, monthly vlog. Um, they're released every, on my website, they're released on Sundays. So for those lucky people that happen to be excited to see what's coming up, they can go on Sundays. Uh, if you subscribe to the newsletter, you actually will get it right into your mailbox on Monday mornings. So you don't even need to go to the blog. The whole blog will actually come to you. Read it, comment on it, share it, tweet it however you want to. Uh, it's a sense of you know, pride for me when I'm able to actually see people enjoy the things that I do. I, I write just for the love of it and nothing more. Um, I do work on books and, and books are a little bit of a different story because they take days. <laughs> you, uh, if, if any of you have ever written a book, you'll notice, you'll find out that uh, you write it and you end up becoming all consumed with it. It goes literally from like, you know, you wake up at five o'clock in the morning because you dream about this book until you're working until like 10, 11 p.m. at night, just working on it solid. And, uh, and then you finally finish it or finish it just enough, right? Because it's never really done, right? If, <clears throat> And there's always more edits and more things you could do. And finally, you have to decide that this is it. <clears throat> Sorry. And, uh, and, and then you go ahead and you see the light of day. You're like, oh my goodness, I forgot what like daylight looked like because I've been locked in an office writing a book. And as you, you know, spend a couple days outside, you're like, hmm, I have a really good idea for another book. <laughs> And the process becomes started all over again. So, um, so don't write a book. Write it if you want to. I definitely, I joke, I joke, but you know, it's um, it is all consuming. Um, so I am on my second book right now. That should be released hopefully in January if I can get my final edits uh, completed. And uh, that one is actually a little bit different writing for me. And this is why it's taking a little bit longer for me to write it. It's, uh, it's a more of a technical piece. Uh, it's uh, how to be a nomad to go from business suit to world backpacker. And it's really on the examples uh, from when I went ahead in 2014 and uh, sold everything and went traveling around the world by myself. And, uh, and it really kind of teaches um, people or at least gives them the inspiration on what to do, how to do it. And, uh, and to actually really go forward uh, with, you know, something that's so exciting and risky and scary. Uh, but it, when you really break it down, it's like anything else. It's one day at a time, a little bit, a little bit. And, uh, and it's wonderful. So I hope uh, if you're out there, you know, please subscribe to the newsletter because you will be the first in line to know when the book is released. Uh, you may even be lucky enough to get an autographed copy from me personally, so hopefully you enjoy that. Uh, we're having a casual chat today on Periscope, so I hope you're enjoying everything that we're talking about. Um, I know we are supposed to be talking specifically about becoming elitist, or at least outsourcing part of your life, and I'll continue to talk on that from time to time, but I'd also like to 
you know, take the opportunity to, to share a little bit of my story, talk about some of the different things that are going on. Uh, please ask questions as you would like, you know, perhaps um, provide some comments. I'm seeing a couple likes on there, so I am enjoying this. Um, this is something I would like to do on a weekly basis, uh, every Tuesday night, the same time as the blogs come out, or the vlog, um, depending on the day or the week of the month. My vlogs come out, it's a two to three minute vlog I like to do. It comes out about the second Monday of every single month. And I like to have discussions based on um, the information that had just been released. So we can either talk, chat, argue, debate, whatever that looks like. Um, read the blog, watch the vlog. Let's all come together. Let's have a really healthy discussion about, uh, you know, did it work for you, did it not? I know my storytelling sometimes gets in the way of uh, assuming any wonderful things. And oh, I have a... <laughs> a good viewer actually on my I, I just got a note saying um, one of my my friends has uh, just joined so thank you very much for joining um, I'm having a glass of wine <laughs> she's a nutritionist <laughs> so coming back to becoming elitist I think that might have been her like <laughs> uh, so coming back to becoming elitist so some of the other things you could possibly outsource in your life. Um, we talked a little bit about uh, a maid. Laundry service, that was a big one. A lot of people don't realize that a lot of laundry service can actually be picked up from your house nowadays, um, especially for dry cleaning. Uh, perfect example, I have another friend that I remember going to his house one time and he, he literally had a pile of shirts sitting there all needing to be ironed. And my mind was a little bit blown and I said, well, why don't you just like get them dry clean? And he's like, no, 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 like dry cleaning costs too much. I'm not going to do that. He's like, I would rather just do it myself. And, uh, and that pile just sat there and it sat there. And eventually I said, you know, you obviously don't like ironing. <laughs> He says, no, I really hate it. He's like, but, you know, I'll, I'll do it. And I said, you know, why don't you just try, you know, taking it to a dry cleaner? And the first week he tried it, it literally changed his life. He couldn't believe how easy it was to have somebody come. Um, he actually put all the, the shirts in a bag. Somebody would actually drive to his house, pick them up, charge his credit card, bring them back to his place and, like, just hang them on the, the rack. And she's like, you know, I have, I have clean shirts all the time. And he was one of those people, um, kind of not, I don't want to talk too much about materialism, but he was one of those people that would rather buy a new shirt than iron a other shirt. And this, uh, this was a little bit mind boggling for me. So it was exciting to see him evolve through this process. And he realized how much time he saved because he really disliked the task. He hated doing it. And to put yourself through that much guilt and that much pressure to, you know, do something that you don't even enjoy doing, I, I don't understand. Um, so really what the, the ask is for, for all the people out there is what are the tasks that you don't enjoy doing? You know, what is the thing that like really makes you cringe inside? Is it laundry? Is it cleaning? Is it um, picking up dog waste in the backyard, which you can actually hire out services to do that. Grocery shopping. Grocery shopping for a lot of people is a big one because the only time they find themselves being able to do it is on a Sunday or a Saturday afternoon. And the grocery store is packed. And especially if you have kids, it is so difficult to try to navigate that cart through the aisles when every exciting thing is on the shelf and they're all wanting to pick that off. There are services now that allow you to grocery shop. And actually, I ended up getting an email not too long ago. Regular grocery shops are now offering this type of service where you can actually go online, pick the items that you want, and they will put them all together, charge your card, load them in your car, and you can just head off. Um, a lot of grocery shops will actually even do this, even if it's not actually online. All you have to do is actually call if you already know the items that you want. Um, they'll usually do this for mostly for seniors, but you know, it's something that they can definitely provide. I mean, they're happy to because they're excited to get your money at the end of the day. So it's always worth asking. Um, if you don't ask, the answer will always be no. 
So really kind of reflect back and find out what is it that makes you, you know, cringe a little. Find out and, you know, start to outsource those types of items. Um, I, you know, I'm so excited for this opportunity today um, as we kind of talk about um, my recent blog, why you should become an elitist. Um, it's actually has received a ton of traffic. I post it both on LinkedIn as well as on my own personal blog. Um, I am you know, indifferent which way you would like to actually see it for now. Um, eventually I'll switch it just entirely to my blog. But for now it's a great way for me to gain additional exposure. Um, I'm trying multiple different social media platforms in order to connect with the community out there as much as possible. Um, if you have any ideas, if you have any questions, I am constantly available. Uh, you can email me at kim at kimorleski.com. Uh, that's the base, best way of reaching me. I am as diligent as I possibly can with my emails. If you're a first time emailer, I promise I will respond back to you as soon as possible. Um, if you're a regular fan, I apologize and I know how much love there is uh, for the things that I do when I write. Um, and it just takes me a little bit longer because of the number of projects I have on the go. But they're all for you. Um, the upcoming book, uh, How to Be a Nomad, go from backpacker, uh, go from business suit to backpacker, should be released um, by uh, sometime in January. I'm excited to do a seminar um, in February of this year in Calgary, Canada, and I'm looking forward to hopefully hosting a speaking event in Sydney, Australia at the beginning of January. Um, for any Australians out there that are watching that would love to actually see me talk, uh, my big talk right now is why you should be able to change your mind, especially for those people that are in that 25 to 39 year old stage. It's a very exciting time and it's very difficult for us to have chosen a career path when we were in our early to mid 20s and feel like we have to stay in that path the entire time and if that was the case I would still be doing corporate sales which is obviously not the case uh, because we evolve and our tastes and our preferences change and as we gain experience there's some things that we just need to do in our lives we feel this inherent feeling and we need to just go out and explore and that was part of the reason why I went ahead and decided to backpack the world and when I came back I was I was the same person but some of my values had changed and that was what kind of led me down this path uh, we, I will be doing a Periscope again next week um, based on my upcoming blog uh, I'm still deciding on which one that is. Um, I am debating between a couple, so you know, please join the mailing list at kimorleski.com and be informed of the new blog, so you'll get it right to your email box. And you can join us on Periscope again next week for some exciting conversation as we go through and talk about, you know, all the exciting things that are happening. Uh, we can have a, you know, chat and a debate. Um, you can provide your questions to me, respond directly to the blog post that comes to your email account, and I would be more than happy to feature your question on the upcoming Periscope as we have it. Uh, there's also some very exciting things in the works, including an e-course, uh, another book on top of my first book. Um, so if you are interested in looking at my first book, you can take a look at that on Amazon.com. Google search my name, Kim Orleski. And I uh, am very excited to host and invite you into my house yet again. Uh, hopefully we can you know, share a glass of wine together. My dog has been very well behaved and I'm very excited about that because this could have gone one of two ways today. <laughs> Uh, and it's sometimes very difficult, uh, especially when I'm doing my vlogs. I actually have to uh, put her away in my office because she is a little bit of a camera enthusiast and she loves to be right in front of the camera which uh, can be very difficult when I'm filming a vlog and uh, and then those vlogs come out every second Monday the vlogs come out every Monday um, unless you go to my site early and you'll be able to see them and get them delivered right to your inbox so thank you very much this has been a wonderful chat um, you know first times for everything and I hope you did enjoy it please you know um, reach out to me on Twitter Instagram Facebook I have a Facebook fan page um, LinkedIn 
And uh, definitely check out my website, join the mailing subscription list because there's going to be some pretty amazing things and only the people that subscribe to the mailing list get uh, first knowledge onto them as well as some opportunities for discounts, prizes. Um, when the second book comes out, there will be an opportunity for somebody on the mailing list to actually get a signed autograph copy or maybe everybody, I haven't quite decided yet, but it will be an awesome opportunity. Thank you. I appreciate you being here.